New year, new office, new unsupported Mac. Let's do it. So a lot of you are probably wondering, why haven't I made a video in like nearly six months? Well, I had a lot going on. I got married. Um, I moved. <laughs> I have my own office now. Um, it's technically my basement. We're still doing a lot of work and it is a work in progress. It's going to take some time, but uh, I'm glad you guys are along for the journey and we are going to make doing YouTube videos a more regular event now, now that we're good and moved in and in a good place to do it. Um, so, I wanted to take my wife's 2010 MacBook Pro and upgrade it for what will probably be the last time to Mac OS Monterey. And I figured maybe you guys want to know how to do it too. So, join me on what will most likely this time be the last unsupported Mac video. Um, and I'll explain why at the end. Okay, so I'm not gonna go through everything in massive detail because I got all of my information from this thread. Link is in the description. Uh, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is make sure that your Mac is compatible, which is going through these right here basically unless you own one of these machines you're able to try this so um, the way I got Monterey was I went to the install assistant but keep in mind I'm running open core which makes Monterey think that this is a supported Mac so your mileage may vary you may have to use this Gib Mac OS, which is a um, kind of a drag and drop into the terminal way of getting it. Um, but if you can go this route, you literally download it, you run the package, and then you have Monterey in your um, applications folder. So once you get Monterey, go over here. Uh, go to disk utility format your usb as my volume which is in the instructions right here and then you just copy this paste it into terminal hit enter wait for your usb to be made then you go back over here and you want to grab open core legacy patcher you want to grab the newest one because it's going to have the newest patches don't be that guy that's like, I didn't know which one to get. You want the newest release. It's right here. It says latest. Let me zoom in on it to help you out. Right there. It says latest. Grab it. Run it. Um, I, will, I will show real quick what you need to do to get Open Core up and running. You choose option one, build open core. Actually, if you're doing this for a different machine, you actually need to go to option four first. Um, and again, this is where you're gonna have to kind of do some Googling. Uh, 2010 MacBook Pro is a Mac Book Pro 7 comma one. Now, it's shows that this is a MacBook Pro 7 comma 1. So you want to build open core and then option 2 install open core to a USB internal drive. I'm not going to do that because I already have it installed but you pick that, you pick your USB and it will install. So now we get to the installation part. So the way I've found to do it, the easiest way is power on, hold down option. This may take a minute. There's no boot channel with this computer and I'm not really sure why, but 
to be honest, it's an old machine and I really don't have a use for it. Okay. Don't know why that happened. Bootable floppy. It's hilarious. There it goes. I don't know what was going on. There we go. And if you go over here where it says EFI boot, we need to click that. Do not click install Mac OS. We need to boot open core first. So hit that and now click install Mac OS. Well, that went hilariously bad. Um, so after I cut the camera off, the MacBook started beeping, informing me that the RAM was bad. Um, so I've decided to just grab a 2009 iMac that I've been working on. It has a bad backlight, but it still works well enough that we should be able to see the process uh, when I cut the lights off here in a second. So we'll just go with this. Okay, so again, turn it on, hold down option. I forgot that has a DVD drive. See, it's, backlight's not dead. It's just dying. So it'll work for our purposes. Okay, so we need this version of EFI boot. I have open core on here already, but again, this isn't a diehard need this machine that's actually been sitting in the corner of my office for a month now because I just haven't had time to work on it. As you can see, the Apple logo and we get a boot screen or we should get it. Yeah, there it goes. There's the progress bar. Um, and at this point, this is a regular Mac OS installation. Um, again, I'll show you really nothing to it you just uh if you choose to wipe your drive if you choose to override it i'm going to choose to wipe the drive we'll go from there so yeah once it boots as you can see monterey is installing on macintosh hd um i will show the finished product and then i will show you the perks of using open core so this is actually my daily driver right now. Um, it is a 2009 Mac Pro, uh, rocking 20 gigs of RAM, and the only graphics card that I could find, which was a GT710. I plan on trying to make that better in the future, but for right now, it's all I could find. And if I restart the machine, one problem with Mac Pros, was that if you used a non-Apple graphics card, you wouldn't get a boot screen. You would just have to kind of improvise until the machine booted. But as you can see, this may take a minute, but we'll get there. It does take a second, but open core loads up and I can even press enter on my magic keyboard and it boots and we get a boot screen which means I can also choose Windows I can choose Linux I can put several different hard drives with different partitions I can load different versions of Mac OS open core works as if the Mac were still supported um, and it is truly great which is why I recommend using it for all of your unsupported Mac needs. Um, it, there is a little bit of a learning curve if you're doing like Hackintosh, but Legacy Patcher works so easily that I honestly was able to ditch a broken MacBook Pro, switch the profile in open core, and then boot it on an iMac in less than five minutes. It really is that easy. And I recommend it because I've been using this Mac Pro daily for about four months now.
So literally three hours later, we are at your select country or region screen. Screen reader called voiceover. If you know how to use voiceover, press command F5 now to turn it on and set up your Mac. I believe you. If you would like to learn how to use voiceover to set up your Mac, press the escape key. Oh, I'm good. Thank you. So, uh, the first time you boot this, it's going to be really slow if you don't have a metal-supported graphics card because you still have to install the patcher to the system. And because of that, like, I'm, I'm going to have to use the keyboard to get down to the United States. But um, because of that, you do not have supported graphics at all, period. You have to install the patches post-install. So, that's where we're at, um, needless to say. But yeah, um, it does work. You gotta be very patient with it. It really did take three hours to install. Um, if you have any questions, I really recommend the forum because this... I know I said last time that it would be my last unsupported Mac video. This really will be. Um, I use mostly supported Macs now. The only reason I kept the Mac Pro is because, hey, 20 gigs of RAM, 5 hard drive slots. But I mostly use supported Macs now. Um, I bought this one for $12 at Goodwill because it's a $12 iMac. Um, and I, once I fix the back lot, I'll flip it, but, um, honestly, my heart's just not in this anymore, and I would like to go on and do more fun, cool how-to stuff, and I don't think I can do that and do these unsupported Mac videos anymore, so this really will be the last one, um, if you have any questions, ask them in the forum, and as always, take it easy.